Hi folks, Dr. Ed Beyer from Beyer Natural Health Solutions. You know, I've been in practice 33 years, practicing functional medicine, which means I'm interested in why you have these different symptoms, not what you have. I mean, I know, I wanna know what you have, but I wanna know why. Now, one of the symptoms that I see so much, especially in females, is anxiety. Now, there's a lot of reasons for anxiety, but I'm gonna talk today about one of the reasons that if you don't take care of, I don't care what else you do for your anxiety, it's not gonna work, or it may work on a temporary basis, and that's low progesterone in females. Now, before I even get into that, I need to explain to you that there's this neurotransmitter in the brain called gamma aminobutyric acid, or GABA, a lot of you have heard of it, okay? And it's calming to the brain. GABA is calming to the brain. In fact, there's a lot of medications that enhance GABA, and they're called benzodiazepines. You know, you know them as Valium or Xanax. Gabapentin is another one. Now, there are other things natural that will also enhance GABA or calming of the brain. One of them is alcohol, right? So we drink alcohol, we have a couple drinks, and we feel relaxed. That's because GABA is calming the brain down, although that's not what we recommend as a long-term solution. And then there's a natural one called Phenoboot. Maybe some of you know about it. That's a GABA enhancer, too. So, and then people will take GABA as a supplement. Now, the problem with that is GABA as a supplement, GABA is a huge molecule, and for most of us, that's not going to be able to cross the blood brain barrier, and so we take it, and we're like, that didn't do anything for me at all. In fact, if it does help you, that's a sign that your blood, blood brain barrier is a little bit leaky. So GABA is the calming influence on the brain. Now, besides anxiety, there's a lot of other symptoms that are related to low progesterone that I want to share with you. Weight gain. Now, in 33 years in practice, I have rarely met a female that wants to gain weight. Uh, low libido is another one, mood swings, depression, PMS, heavy bleeding, infertility, migraines, uterine fibroids, endometriosis, almost always due to low progesterone, insomnia, because progesterone calms the brain, uh, women that don't have enough progesterone don't sleep very well, and then hair and bone loss. Progesterone is a major player when it comes to healthy hair follicles, and it stimulates the osteoblast cells in the bone to make more bone. So there are basically two reasons uh, that cause low progesterone, and this is where it gets a little complicated. It's be Number one is you truly have low progesterone. Number two, there's always a tug of war between progesterone and its counterpart, estrogen. So there's this ratio between progesterone and estrogen. And that ratio in healthy females should be about 25 to 1. I rarely see that. So you could theoretically be producing enough progesterone, but if you have too much estrogen, that ratio isn't good. So you could truly have low progesterone or you could have okay progesterone, but too much estrogen. That creates a, a, a form of progesterone being low. Now, there are two major reasons why a female will produce low progesterone, and one of them is birth control. If you're taking any type of hormone contraceptive, and a lot of you are on hormone contraceptives to regulate your periods, to get rid of your symptoms, Ladies, I'm telling you right now, if you go to someone like me, those things can be regulated without having to take birth control. Now, if you're taking it as a true contraceptive, that's a decision that you need to make, and, and it's up, that's between you and, and, and how you feel. But I'm telling you, birth control pills or IUDs with hormones or implants or injections, they do one thing. They prevent you from ovulating. Now. Ovulation is so important to a female, not just to get pregnant, but it controls over a hundred different other chemical reactions in the body that your doctor may not make you aware of. When you ovulate, what happens is the egg gets released from the follicle, and then the follicle becomes something known as the corpus luteum. And that corpus luteum produces mass quantities of progesterone, preparing the uterus for pregnancy. And so when you don't ovulate, you don't have that surge of progesterone in the second half of your cycle. And that's very, very important to a female, to a menstruating female. Now, the other reason for true low progesterone is poor adrenal health. The adrenal glands, which are our stress glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, 
in a female that's menstruating, it produces about a third of your progesterone. Now, when you um, stop menstruating and you go into menopause, it produces like 50%. So adrenal health is very, very important in a female to produce proper amounts of progesterone. Now, there are lots of things that'll, that'll cause your adrenal health not to be so good. Lack of sleep is one of them. Any stress, anemia. Now, that stress could be physiologic, which is what I'm going to talk about now. It could be psychological, too. But I'm going to tell you, physiological stressors are a lot worse than the psychological ones. So lack of sleep is a huge adrenal stress, and it'll prevent you from making proper amounts of progesterone. The other one's an anemia. And anemia means you're not making enough red blood cells, which means you don't have enough oxygen. Nothing will stress the body more than that improper blood sugar. And what I see in a lot of young females is low blood sugar, where you get irritable and shaky when you don't eat or you don't sleep very well and you wake up and you're not hungry, you get migraine headaches. That stresses the adrenal glands. Then there's certain things that we take like caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, all of that. Poor diet, inflammatory diet. Eating foods that are processed will stimulate the adrenals and make them fatigue. Certain medications and bad relationships, right? So when the adrenals get stimulated, it produces the stress hormone called cortisol, and nothing will destroy progesterone quicker than high levels of cortisol. So that, those are the reasons for low progest, true low progesterone. Now remember, there's another cause of progesterone being insufficient, and that's estrogen dominance. Again, the ratio between progesterone and estrogen should be 25 to 1 in a healthy female. So there are a lot of times where females have excessive amounts of estrogen, causing that ratio to be low, and that's gonna create anxiety and all the other symptoms that I mentioned. So estrogen dominance, number one, birth control pills again. So, or any type of hormonal contraceptive, IUD injections and, and pellets. So when you are on the birth control, you, are, you become estrogen dominant. There have been multiple studies that show this. Now most breast cancers are estrogen fed, and I think most of you know that. And uh, st strikingly, one out of eight females is going to get breast cancer. As soon as you go on any type of uh, hormonal birth control, that ratio goes down to one out of five. That's amazing. So, and there's a whole bunch of things that's on topic for another day that will create um, uh, that lack of ovulation creates. Now, there are other things called xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens are compounds in the environment that actually are, are hormone disruptors and act like estrogen in our body. Things like petrochemicals that exist in our clothing, carpet, foods. You should be eating foods that are hormone-free, ladies. There's so many different things, you know, such as perfumes and parabens and our lotions that we take and different plastics all kinds of different things that contain estrogen-like substances that we teach our patients to avoid. They're ubiquitous, they're all over the place. Now, the other thing is the uh, poor, that will cause estrogen dominance is poor gut function. Now, the gut helps to get rid of estrogen. Estrogen has the longest half-life in the human body males and females, and it is the hardest hormone to get rid of. It's like, it's like Velcro, it's hard to get rid of. And the way we get rid of it, it goes through the liver, it gets conjugated, it goes through the gallbladder, and then we poop it out, we pee it out, we, we sweat it out, and we breathe it out. But if you have poor gut flora or poor gut function, what happens is the estrogen gets deconjugated, especially if you have constipation, and it gets reabsorbed right back into the bloodstream, creating an estro estro uh, estrogen dominant situation. The other thing is, naturally, the females about in their early 30s, their progesterone levels start to decline. It's just natural that that happens, but that does not happen with estrogen. Estrogen doesn't decline until, we, until a female hits menopause, which is average age is, is 51. Um, so we see this natural decrease in progesterone, increase in estrogen as females get older. So adrenal health, avoiding xenoestrogens, making sure gut is working right will prevent you from getting and getting off birth control will, will uh, make this estrogen dominance disappear and help you with anxiety, which is such a common symptom that I see. So we do functional medicine, we do proper testing, we check all this out, and we educate our patients on what they can do and lifestyle changes 
to make their progesterone estrogen ratios good and to increase their production of progesterone. And if you don't do that, anything else that you're doing for anxiety will only be temporary at best. I'm Dr. Ed Beyer. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you know someone that's suffering from this, please share it with them. I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to sharing more information with you in the near future.